Hi, um, I'm finishing up uh, some last minute stuff on this 36 horsepower engine that I'm rebuilding and restoring for a customer. And I thought it would be a really good time to show how easily to check if you are at uh, top dead center for number one or number three. And uh, also you can use the same method for checking two and four. Um, this question comes up a lot on the forums. And uh, so the thing might be a little easier to show it than to type it out. So um, let's let's start with the basic stuff here. You get uh, you get to the notch on the pulley. Now, different year pulleys have different notches. This one is a 36 horse, so it has one mark at uh, seven and a half before top dead center. So I've lined that up with the mark, you know, the seam on the case right here which is not really where you want to adjust your valves at with this pulley. But another way to easily check um, approximately where top dead center is going to be is uh, if you look at the case seam here and the keyway on the crankshaft it might be a little difficult to see on this but uh, the keyway is always supposed to be at 90 degrees perpendicular to the case seam. This is a little bit off, so I'm going to rotate it just a little bit to get to about 90 degrees, and that's pretty darn close. And if you look, obviously the mark on the pulley has moved a little bit, and that's pretty much about where the mark would be on a pulley that has three notches in it. So that's that's one way to check. You can make sure that this keyway is 90 degrees to this. Obviously you have to take the pulley nut off, but I had that off at this point anyway. Okay, so that's at uh, top dead center, you know. Keyway at 90 degrees to this, top dead center. And that's either for number one or for number three. Now the way to determine if it's at number one or at number three would be to look at the rockers. Now this is number one intake. This is number one exhaust. Let's go around to the other side of the engine here. This is number three intake. This is number three exhaust. Now when the crankshaft is at top dead center as it sets right now, one of those is going to be a top dead center. So I'm going to Put a wrench on the generator nut here. Pardon me. And I'm going to move the crankshaft back and forth a little bit. Okay, moving it back and forth a little tiny bit. So if you'll notice on number one, the valves are not moving. So I'm going to put the crankshaft back at top dead center approximately. And I'm going to come over to number three side. And I'm going to rotate the crankshaft again. Just a little tiny bit. And notice how there's an overlap. So when there's an overlap on number three side, that means number one has reached top dead center on the compression stroke. And that's the cylinder that is ready to fire. So you see that overlap? Now if you carefully turn it slowly and you catch where that overlap is right there, that should be about top dead center on the crankshaft. So let's go back over and check how close it is on the pulley. And that's pretty much where I'd set it for 90 degrees. So that's telling me that since number three is overlapping and number one was not moving, that number one is at top dead center. Now I have a camshaft here that I'm going to show you why that is. So the X's mark the flat spots on number three when number one is at top dead center. 
and the camshaft rotates counterclockwise to the crankshaft. So, when number one is at top dead center, you'll notice that these side, this side of the cam, where the push rods ride, both of those surfaces, there's nothing raised up on them. And on this side, you're going to get the uh, the exhaust will be closing right there. So that's coming up. And number three intake will be opening, which is why it pushes down because it's starting to push the push rod and lift the valve. So when you're coming up to number one, the exhaust will be closing, the intake will be opening. So I'm going to put the wrench on the pulley again and you'll be able to see that. So you'll see number three intake is, is closed or closed, you know, in a more closed position. And as I rotate it coming up to top dead center onto number one, the exhaust is coming out and the intake is starting to open. And again, that's when the camshaft is looking like that. And again, you'll see that this side of the cam is flat so that you can adjust the top dead center on number one. So, if you really wanted to get into it, you can turn the pulley 180 degrees. And that belt's a little loose. And you'll notice the same thing. For number four and number two. Now number four is over here, and that's the next one to fire. So those aren't moving. And you'll see the overlap here. Exhaust coming up, intake going down. So when that overlap is happening right there, where they're both kind of stopped at the end of their travel, I don't have it marked, but that's going to be top dead center for the opposite side. Now I'm not, and another thing you can do too is the pulley and the, the keyway slide will be 90 degrees to this case seam on the other side. So number four is ready to fire. Keyway at 90 degrees. Opposite side number two is overlapping. Now, you might have noticed that I don't have the cap off. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter where it's firing on the distributor at this point. Because when I'm adjusting valves, that's irrelevant. It's all dependent on the crankshaft position and which valves are overlapping. So I'm going to turn this, hopefully. Back up to number three. Okay, there's the mark. So, key weight 90 degrees, notch in the pulley. Well, this notch isn't supposed to be lined up with the casing, but you get the idea. Number three, I'm, I'm rotating the crankshaft now. You can see the valves moving on number four. Number three is not moving. Number one is overlapping. So that tells me that since number one is overlapping, that number three is at top dead center. And uh, number three is ready to fire. So just out of fun, I'm going to pop the distributor cap off. This is going to be the number three wire back here. And that's where the rotor is going to be pointing. Yep. Rotor position back to number three. So that's basically it. I hope this helps. I know this is a very common concern for many people.
you know, how do you check for top dead center for whichever cylinder might be firing? A real simple way is to pop the valve covers off, rotate till it's at uh, top dead center for one cylinder, and see which valves are over overlapping on the other side. Hope this helps. Have a good day.